push again. Push, 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 push. push, push. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Hey, buddy. There you go. You got him. Baby's disconnected if you want to go get some O2. Oh, so we had one vial left. We just had one more shot to be able to get pregnant. It's really cool to see them just overwhelmed with joy with baby Grayson coming into the family and Mama Fran being able to have a kid from 5114 and be able to maybe like link together and be more connected with the others. I think having another brother is really cool because once he gets older, we might all do um, a lot of fun stuff if we're really close together. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. from 514. I just turned 18 and I was just wondering like about contacting the donor and like the process I had to go through and everything. Oh, okay, happy birthday. Thank you. Um, so basically what I have to do is that I have to put in a request to locate the donor. Um, because the donor is anonymous, it's not guaranteed that he will respond to our inquiries, but we will definitely do our due diligence and trying to reach out to him to find out how he feels about communicating. So um, from the time I turn in the information, it can take anywhere between four to six weeks before I get his whereabouts. And we generally attempt at least three times. And if he doesn't reply within three attempts, then we have to assume that he doesn't want to um, communicate. And at that point, we will have to respect his wishes. Julia, like, and me, like, we've always, like, been curious about a dad and, like, what it would be like if we had a dad kind of thing. We've always been, like, lucky to have, like, the mom, so we do. But, like, having a dad it would be, like, different. Like, we're not, like, asking for one. We just, like, we just like, kind of want to know, you know? And it's just, like, how do you not want to meet people you gave life to? Like, how could that not mean something to you? Yeah, there's, like, a lot of stuff to, like, he has to like factor in like so many things that like saying yes like could affect in his life. Maybe he's just as nervous as we are. Yeah, cause I'd be more nervous if I were in his situation. It's like we have each other. He has, who knows who he has to like go through this with, I guess. A lot of the siblings, once they found out that I was getting the call today, um, like Danny started crying at school and had to go home and a lot of them were just like freaking out and so was I. It was like, it's just like super anxious and like, and she's calling me. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Missy Tanati. Hi, how are you? Hi, Maddie. It's Latrice Allen from the Cryo Bank. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Good. Well, I want to give you a call to give you an update. Um, I did speak with the donor. The bottom line is that he is willing to communicate um, anonymously, facilitated through me. He needs a little bit more time to iron out whatever the thought process needs to be. So he says it's not a problem if it's gonna happen, the, the issue is just when it's gonna happen because he needs to make sure that he's 100% comfortable that his family will be protected once he starts to communicate. Okay, wow. I don't know if you're allowed to tell me this, but so he does like have his own like family and everything? Like, does he have yes, his he own does. kids? Yes, he does. Do you know how many there are? 
I do, but I'd have to let him let you know that. Okay. Thank you so much. I can't wait to hear back from you. Okay, no problem. You're welcome, and have a great weekend. You too. Thank you. Okay. All righty. Bye. Lisa, what the heck? <laughs> what did you expect? Is that what you thought? Not that. What did you think? What did, did you think you'd say no? Yes. You did? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you were hoping the easy way out. Hello? Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's alive. Good news. And he said yes to contacting me anonymous, anonymously through the cryobank, but he doesn't want contact from anyone else who is under the age of 18. And he has his own family and kids. And I'm going to send him, like, a bio of, like, stuff. So, like, if he gets to know you better, he might, like, reveal his name? Maybe. I don't know. It's got to be a step at a time. Well, that's good. It's a good start and like, whatever he's comfortable with. This is good news, though, guys. Yeah, I'm excited. I didn't have to cry. <laughs> kind of scary that I let my guard down now that he said yes to contact because now is the time that I really, like, could get rejected, like, as a person. Like, with him reading my bio and, like, actually seeing who I am and, like, seeing a picture of me. And then if he says like to stop contacting me or whatever, then that would really be rejection. So that's kind of scary. I've been excited today. I've been nervous. I've been crying. Not sure why. Just, I guess the enormity of the whole thing, you know, that it's like finally over, that he's coming back. He hasn't lived here in two and a half years, so it's gonna be kind of a little nervous about just living with him again. And, and he's changed so much, and I think I've changed, and it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out. Coming back together again after two and a half years is two different people. It's gonna be interesting. Mm -hmm. There he is. Hi, Where's your stuff? No, it's up home with you. Oh. How was your flight? It's good. Hey. So welcome. It's so good. Coming home, it doesn't really feel real yet. I came back with a lot more self-confidence and definitely patience, like understanding for others. I guess it'll probably hit me sooner when I start like school and all that, that I'm here for good and I'm really not like gonna go anywhere else. All right, so right now I just got um, an email from the cryobank that's forwarding the information my donor replied to because um, I wrote in when I turned 18 about a month ago um, to see if he wanted contact. So um, right now I'm gonna go open the email. It's almost 12.30 a.m. All right. There's a photo. <laughs> he said he loves my funky dreads. He said, there is not a day that I do not think about you and your siblings. I have had many nights with little sleep pondering and considering your lives. The answers I have found have made me feel incredibly touched, thankful, and proud. I am grateful that, for whatever reason, and from whatever I gather so far, the people that chose to have you appear to have done a great job. Right now, I feel deeply appreciative for this opportunity to learn of, your, of you and your wanting to know more about me. Thank you for sharing your picture, information, and questions. I screamed and shut the computer and ran to my room. That's my dad. My mom had just pulled out of the driveway and I was like, mom, come back. But she got back and I was like crying and holding my phone and she was like, what's wrong? And I was like, here. Oh my God. It's like so surreal. Like it's hard to accept that this is the person that I had been hunting, 
wondering about for my whole life. I don't think it still like hit me yet, but every single time I say it, I start to cry. It doesn't seem real. Sadie, she sends them and I couldn't look at them, so I gave it to my friends and they and I sat on the other side of them and like they were all lined up on the couch in the storm. And I was like, Can you look at them? And they're like, Yeah. And so I gave them the phone and they were like, He's hot! <laughs> I don't have to wonder anymore. Like, I don't look at a guy and be like, oh, you could be my dad. Like, I know what he looks like. Turning 18 was like the most anticipated birthday of my entire life because I knew I was able to possibly come in contact with the donor. When I got the email from the cryobank, it was like an attachment, and the attachment was the letter from the donor to me. What he had saved it as was to Alexis. And that already had me like, like this. One of the most impactful things that he said in his letter was that I think about you every day. I don't know how to explain how I felt about that in words. It meant so much to me that he said that. Three days later, I was in class and I just broke down completely. And I think it was just this, like a realization and processing of like, not just that he had contacted me, but what that meant and all of the emotions behind that. Today's date is November 3rd, 2017. This is donor 5114. My being a donor has been on my mind through the years. As a donor, you have an opportunity to ponder and to care about something that is going to exist, that is out of your control. The decision for me to become an anonymous donor was out of respect to the parents. I felt like removing me as a variable would help parents to create a nurturing and stable environment without any distractions. But I. I certainly was hopeful that I would get information and learn as much as I could about how they were all doing. I think if I hadn't, it would probably start eating at me. It's hard to imagine being the genetic half to so many people, people that are related to you in a significant way after not knowing them ever in person for much of their life. I've given some thought to what it might be like for some of the offspring to have the curiosity about who their biological father might be. That's really one big reason why I'm participating in this is so that I can help them finally deal with those questions and have answers to those questions. I would love to meet each of the kids. I think it would be a really neat experience. I'm very curious to meet them and to learn from their experiences and to see how things are going. And the best part of being a donor so far is knowing that I helped people and knowing that people that really wanted to have a family were able to have a family. So my wife and I are going through this together and looking forward to all of the experiences that can be shared. The answers I've found have made me feel incredibly touched, thankful and proud. never connected with any of the siblings, I think my life would be a lot different. I think as a person, I'd still be relatively the same, but I would definitely be missing out on some great relationships and bonds with people that you can't really get any other way. Growing up, like when you're in middle school and high school, having people that you can relate to and fall back on, it just really has created such an amazing support system for me. And I don't know, I just don't think I question myself as much as I used to. 
Through the whole process, it was just mostly like a self-discovery. Like all of the things that I went through and the people that I met, it helped lead me to who I am now. I've learned to be more curious and to not push the limits, but test it a little. This experience has taught me that your family is more than like who is right there with you all the time. And you can feel close to somebody that lives in Alaska or like across the country from you or wherever they are. It's just how you choose to build that relationship. To my younger self, I would say, you can come into this world mad about how you were conceived, but you also have to realize that you function completely independently from any of those other factors and that you are your own person and that it does not matter at the end of the day. It's still you and it's okay. Discovery.